Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemini TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi, and this is Azing News. Philippine court says only part of anti-terror law unconstitutional. The Philippines Supreme Court said parts of an anti-terrorism law passed last year were unconstitutional in a decision held by one of its opponents as partial win. On the whole, we view it as a disappointing decision, uh, but at the same time, we acknowledge that there's a partial win you know, in Section 4 the ruling on uh, the unconstitutionality you know, of uh, provisions of, of certain sections that would um, result, probably result, you know, to violations on basic freedoms and civil liberties. In a statement said, the court struck down parts of the law for being overbroad and violate of freedom of expression. We welcome no, the development that some of the provisions of the law was regarded as unconstitutional. But at the same time, no, ang gusto kasi talaga natin ay mas scrap yung uh, buong batas sapagkat uh, it puts in danger the civil liberties and the rights, the human rights that we currently enjoy today. No? Uh, pinapayagan ng batas na madetain ang uh, mga individual no, for at least no, or at the maximum 24 days even without cases filed against them. So, uh, this deprives liberty of people. No? Kung baga tinatanggal niya yung innocent until proven guilty na doctrine na dapat sana ay tamasahin ng lahat ng mga mamamayang Pilipino. The controversial law signed by Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte in July 2020 grants police and military sweeping powers to tackle security threats but has alarmed some lawyers and human rights activists who fear it could be used to suppress free speech and harass government opponents. Malaysian residents happy after court upholds convictions against ex-Prime Minister Najib. Some Malaysian residents welcome a court decision to uphold former Premier Najib Razak's conviction on corruption charges linked to the One Malaysia Development Berhard scandal. Najib was appealing a 12-year prison sentence and 50 million fine imposed by Kuala Lumpur High Court last year for criminal breach of trust abuse of power and money laundering, one of five trials that he facing over corruption allegations. I'm quite surprised and happy, at least for a high-profile case. We rarely hear reports on decisions like this one, where a high-profile individual has to face this sort of sentence and their appeal is rejected. This proves that the court is still transparent and isn't being influenced by political forces. Uh, One Malaysia development per heart scandal, which a U.S. Attorney General described as the worst form of kleptocracy, has cast a shadow over Malaysian politics since questions about the fund first emerged years ago. U.S. and Malaysian authorities says 4.5 billion U.S. dollar was believed to have been stolen and more than $1 billion made its way into Najib's personal accounts. An acquittal would have uh, given him the uh, opportunity to uh, uh, make a comeback and uh, reclaim the uh, uh, top position. Uh, but uh, with the court's decision to uphold the guilty verdict, uh, he has to wait a little longer uh, before he could uh, potentially mount a, a credible comeback. Uh, but more importantly for the uh, Prime Minister, uh, this decision uh, gives him the much needed uh, breathing space uh, to strengthen his position, to strengthen his uh, uh, government as he does not need to worry about uh, challenge uh, from within the party, especially from uh, Najib and his allies. So this gives him the uh, flexibility in the way that he runs the government. Therefore, Najib has consistently denied wrongdoing and pleaded not guilty at the trial last year through the court found he had illegally received about $10 million from SRC International, former unit of now defunct 1MDB. Philippine activists mark International Human Rights Day with protests against Duterte. Over 100 activists held a protest at a state university in Manila to mark International Human Rights Day and condemn the alleged abuses under President Rodrigo Duterte's government. Activists marched along streets, holding up banners saying, stop the killings, and later destroyed an effigy as they called for justice for the thousands that have been killed. 
we have a journalist uh, killed a few days ago. Uh, we have activists uh, being abducted. We have uh, uh, doctors being shot in the streets. Now, all these things uh, show a very grim picture. Uh, human rights has not deteriorated this much. Since Duterte unleashed his drug war, security forces say more than 6,000 suspected drug dealers have been killed because they fought back violently. Rights groups say authorities have murdered unarmed suspects and staged crime scenes on a massive scale. During this Human Rights Day, we continue to demand basic human rights from a tyrant like President Duterte. The Philippine Supreme Court had also declared two parts of a controversial anti-terrorism law unconstitutional, dismaying activists and rights groups who sought scrapping of the legislation over fears it threatened civil liberties. Picture show Lenin villages decimated by Indonesia volcano. Satellite images of Indonesian villages and areas surrounding mountain Semeru showed the scale of devastation days after the volcano's deadly eruption, which killed dozens of people on the slopes of Java Island's highest mountain. The series before and after satellite images by Maxar Technologies, obtained by Reuters, showed the stark contrast of the landscape in November 2019 as compared to four days after Severo erupted. Destroyed houses, roads and fields were seen covered in molten volcanic flow as they sat against a national landscape in the villages of Churaroboan, Sumberwulu and Kamarkjan. According to the Disaster Mitigation Agency said that 3,676-meter mountain Severo volcano erupted, sending a cloud of ash into the sky and dangerous pyroclastic flows into villages below. At least 34 people were killed, thousands have been displaced, and 22 remain missing. Mountain Semeru is one of more than 100 active volcanoes in Indonesia, in area of high seismic activity atop multiple tectonic plates known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. Burmese nationals in Thailand heartbroken as Suchi receives a jail. Burmese nationals at the Bangkok market expressed, discussed, and their heartbroken feelings after Myanmar's deposed leader Aung San Suu Kyi was convicted and sentenced to jail. The beloved leader was found guilty of charges of incitement and breaching coronavirus restrictions, drawing international condemnation of what critics described as a sham trial. <laughs> We felt that it was unfair and we resent Mother Sue's arrest since the coup was staged by the military. They said there was fraud during the election and our votes were neglected. Since then, we do not like this military regime. Another fellow country mate questioned why the international community is just watching the events upholding against Suu Kyi. I feel so heartbroken about losing our leader, as we all have high hopes for the future of our children and our return home to her leadership. We did not think its verdict will happen to her. I am wondering why the international community is just watching what is happening to her. State TV reported Suu Kyi is set to serve two years in detention at an undisclosed location, a sentence reduced from four years after a partial pardon from Myanmar's military chief. We are not scared of the military regime, but we feel more of disgust and hatred towards them. I feel disappointed on how cruel they are. Former President Win Mint was also initially sentenced to four years as the court delivered its first verdicts in numerous cases against Suu Kyi, who led the former civilian government in the role of state councillor and other leaders of state military coup. South Korea's parents protest over student vaccine pass mandate. Several parents' associations in South Korea held protests against the vaccine pass mandate for children aimed at containing the spread of COVID-19 among teenagers. The government has said anyone aged 12 years or older will have to show a vaccine pass to enter public spaces, including private tuition centers, libraries and study cafes that most students attend after school. Currently, the exemption age is set at 17 years old. The Korea government, Disease Control and Prevention Agency, and the Minister of Education are putting forward a plausible justification for mandating vaccines in the sake of public interest. 
but there is no one taking responsibility for the deaths. The mandate has sparked uproar among some parents who refuse to vaccinate their children, citing potential side effects and reports of vaccine breakthrough infections, meaning infections that happen to people even after they were fully vaccinated. Health officials said vaccines offer protection against severe symptoms and the rate of adverse side effects reported among teenagers is lower than that of adults. The worried vaccine pass mandate comes as infections among teenagers in South Korea have risen sharply following the resumption of full-time in-person classes in November. Out of 100,000 children, 210 infections were reported over the past four weeks, while out of the same number of adults, only 167 tested positive. UN decrees escalation of grave human rights abuses in Myanmar. The United Nations Human Rights Office said Myanmar's military was committing grave violations including killing 11 people and setting fire to their bodies. UN human rights spokesperson Rupert Caulfield told at Geneva briefing we are appealed by alarming escalation of grave human rights abuses in Myanmar. Sustainable, just, inclusive and peaceful world. Just a reminder of this call for action that really... We're appalled by the alarming escalation of grave human rights abuses in Myanmar. Uh, in the last week alone, security forces have killed and burned to death 11 people, among them five minors, and rammed vehicles into protesters exercising their fundamental right to peaceful assembly. More than 10 months since Myanmar's military overthrew the democratically elected government in a February coup, the country's human rights situation is deepening on an unprecedented scale, with serious violations reported daily of the rights to life liberty and security of person, uh, the prohibition against torture, the right to a fair trial, and freedom of expression. In the last week alone, security forces have killed and burned to death 11 people, among them five minors, and rammed vehicles into protesters, exercising their fundamental right to peaceful assembly. Since the coup, uh, Myanmar's General Minyang Lang's forces have repeatedly failed to respect their obligations under international law to protect the country's people. And as a result, more than 1,300 people have lost their lives and over 10,600 more have been detained. These latest grave violations demand a firm, unified and resolute international response that redoubles efforts to pursue accountability for the Myanmar military and the restoration of democracy in Myanmar. In addition, United States Department spokesperson Ned Price says the United States was outraged by reports that Myanmar soldiers rounded up and killed 11 people in the northwestern region of Sagaing. Uh, these attacks are heinous, they're completely unacceptable, and they disregard the common values of humanity. And they're also unfortunately far from isolated. In recent weeks, we've received multiple reports of villages being burned, including protected structures such as places of religious worship and residential buildings. In Thantlang town in Chin State, credible sources report the military torched 19 civilian and religious buildings and 450 homes in 10 different incidents. And a few weeks ago in Kaya State, villages were reportedly burned alive when the structure they tried to shelter in was allegedly set ablaze by security forces. There was no immediate reaction from Myanmar's military rulers to the accusations from the UN rights body. Kitchen provides comfort of displaces Indonesia volcano victims. Volunteers got down to business at the soup kitchens in Penangal's evacuation center and efforts to offer a sliver of food and warmth to those displaced from their homes in the wake of deadly Indonesian volcanic eruption. Indeed, our job from the Ministry of Social Affairs is to ensure that the basic needs of refugees are met, which is the daily need for food. We are supported by the soup kitchen, which produces 2,000 packets of food per day for a day's meal. What if there are only 184 people in the refugee camp? Then the remaining food will be given to other refugees in other places. Bagaimana kemudian kalau di sini cuma ada 184? Sisanya memang kita bagikan kepada pengungsi-pengungsi yang ada di luar. At least 43 people have died and hundreds have been injured since Mount Semeru eruption, while more than 6,000 people were evacuated, with many now uncertain whether they will ever be able to live in the area again. 
Diharapannya memang kita ingin... We hope to eliminate the stigma that refugee camps are scary, sad, and dirty. We want to change that image so that people in the refugee camps can have a good stay, meaning that we won't feel like they are in the refugee camp. Baik, gitu. Artinya tidak merasakan layaknya di sebuah pengungsian. Itu yang ingin kita coba capai juga di sini. In the field kitchen set up at the evacuation center, volunteers chopped vegetables and cooked rice and eggs to place in around 2,000 food parcels a day for the people sheltering in the area. In this situation, we feel happy as well as sad. Happy because we are gathered with many people, but sad because we remember now we don't have a house. Yes, we really hope that as much as possible, we can have a house again, but not here. Yes, we can't do anything. However, in spite of a situation like this, we just try to make it comfortable. Here, for matters such as eating, clothes, blankets, and bathroom are all fulfilled. In Indonesia, the 3,676 meter Mount Sumeru is one of more than 100 active volcanoes in Indonesia, which straddles the Pacific Ring of Fire, an area of high seismic activity that rests atop multiple tectonic plates. British Prime Minister met Sultan of Brunei at Downing Street. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson met with the Sultan of Brunei, Hassan al bolkiah at Downing Street. Johnson greeted the Sultan with an elbow bump outside number 10 before the pair sat down for a meeting at Prime Minister's residence. South Korea cut COVID-19 booster to interval against infection rise. Officials said South Korea will further cut the interval for coronavirus booster vaccines from all adults from 4 to 5 months to 3 as it struggles to fight record levels of infections amid concerns over the Omicron variant. The move came three weeks after the government reduced the booster gap for people aged 60 and older and primary groups to four months from six. The interval for all other adults had been five months. Until now, we have recommended that the inoculation interval of the third dose after the second to be four to five months. The government has decided to shorten the third vaccination interval to three months in order to speed up the third inoculation. South Korea has fully vaccinated almost 94% of its adult so far, and more than 31% of some 17 million eligible for a booster shot have received it. Currently, there are 7,000 patients, so the medical system is quite stretched. As you have asked, there are cases of death while waiting for hospitalization. It's a very difficult situation. But since distancing rules were eased last month under Living with COVID-19 scheme, the country has been grappling with a spiraling number of new cases, putting heavy strains on its medical system. Total infection in countries since the start of the pandemic have risen to 503,606 with 4,130 deaths. Well, that's the whole news for today's episode. Have a nice and great weekdays ahead.